Chapter 1059 is here, the incident of Captain Kobe. We had a crazy chapter last time with all the cross guild stuff, the bounties for the straw hats, the warlord bounties. Oda has a lot to live up to after the past few chapters. However, he delivers big again. This final saga has been fire so far. Cover story continues on with Caesar joining Germa. Katakuri, Oven, and the others are chasing after them. However, Caesar just used his hallucinogenic gas against Katakuri and Oven, causing these two to start hitting each other. This cover story will probably end with Caesar escaping with Germa, potentially reforming Mads with Judge. Queen will be thrown into the mix as well, as well as Vegapunk eventually, whenever he's revealed. The actual chapter starts with Marco on Shanks's ship. It turns out that is being dropped off by Shanks onto Sphinx Island. Shanks is like, hey yo Marco, do you want to join my crew? Again, he asks him again. Obviously Marco is like, nah, you wish. I'm tired of looking after y'all. And then he leaves. For some reason, despite not being in Wano anymore, we skip back to another Yamato flashback. Yamato was supposed to join the crew. However, despite Luffy considering her a crew member and everything, as well as the other Straw Hats at this point, Yamato saw what happened with Green Bull pulling up to Wano, the danger that he caused. So she decides that she must stay, that it's her responsibility, and that it would be irresponsible on her part if she were to just leave Wano in danger like this. Because Momonosuke and the other scabbards are not ready to defend it on their own. That's what I was hoping for. Although I do wish that that was shown to us back then. However, regardless, we still got it. It's okay. It is what it is. That's a good reason for staying. So now I'm less mad at it. Either way, I kind of didn't care if Yamato joined or not. I just wanted it to be shown to us as to why Yamato couldn't come anymore. Regardless, in that same time frame back in Wano, Marco was shown alongside the other Straw Hats and everything. However, he spots Shanks' ship and he was like, hey yo Luffy, it was nice seeing you again, fighting alongside you. Ace would be proud. This is your era now. And then he dips. That's how we skip forward to the present time and we see Marco on Shanks' ship. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the present time, we skip to Amazon Lily and we see it in a damaged state with a hole in its mountain. This took place after the marine attack when they attempted to capture Boa Hancock. This is where the main meat of the chapter takes place. We started flashback to see all the events that took place during that attack. The marines are attacking Amazon Lily. However, it's then revealed to us that there's these new pacifista models named Seraphims that seem to be modeled to look like child versions of the the warlords we see a mihawk model as well as a boa hancock model and not only do they behave like pacifista with the lasers and everything but they also seem to have lunarian traits with flames on their backs as well as black wings as well as brown skin so it seems like the government was doing some shady experimentation right there and another thing they also have star-shaped pupils regardless these pacifista models or ssg whatever you want to call them, they are very powerful to the point where even, well, Teach pulls up and everything. They're all struggling with them. Blackbeard Teach, Katarina Devon, and Vasco Shot pull up to Amazon Lily. Blackbeard makes his move and it turns out that he wants Boa's devil fruit. Teach recognizes the Lunarians, or at least the Lunarian traits in these Seraphims, stating the black wings, brown skin. Teach always has been very knowledgeable about many things. So he probably knows about the Lunarians. Kobe obviously is right there. He was supposed to fight Boa Hancock, although the events don't seem to be going that way. He's asking, please come with us, Boa. We'll leave the island alone. Boa turns a bunch of marines as well as Blackbeard's men into stone. She turns Katarina Devon into stone, Helmepo into stone, Vasco Shot, among many others. Boa reveals that only she can turn these people back to normal and that if one kills her, then these people are essentially dead because nobody else could turn them back to stone. Even if somebody else were to eat her fruit, that person would not be able to turn them back to normal. So the marines are not able to capture Boa because they need her to turn these people back to stone and Blackbeard cannot kill her because of what she just revealed. Boa also reveals that if Blackbeard were to consume her fruit it wouldn't work for him because he lacks inherent beauty. So you really need to be physically attractive to be able to make use of the fruit. Something that in most people's eyes Blackbeard lacks. Kobe is like damn, this is gonna be trouble. Kobe recognizes that this has turned into a very sticky situation. In fact, Teach even talks to him and was like, hey yo, hero Kobe, this problem is becoming bigger than expected, eh? Teach then reveals to Kobe that thanks to his actions at the Rocky Port incident, he was able to defeat Wang Ji, a former member of the Rocks Pirates actually. And thanks to that, he was able to take over Pirate Island or Hachinosu Island. That's pretty interesting. Even more connections between Teach and Rocks. That tells me that if Teach is not 
not directly related to Rockne Zebek, then instead he is at least very heavily inspired by him and is trying to walk in his footsteps. From there, Teach simply states that Boa is lying. I might as well just kill her. Right on cue, Rayleigh with his very powerful hockey enters the battle with Shaki by his side causing Teach to be shocked. Rayleigh's like, yo Whitebeard's apprentice. You know something? Although that's not too mature of me, I never really liked you. I gotta be honest with you. For some reason I kind of saw Rayleigh as a little bit above that but it was pretty funny seeing that. So if it's coming from Rayleigh it must mean something. <laughs> pulls up kind of like how Shanks pulled up in Marineford to stop the war. Rayleigh tells Hancock to return everybody to normal and that he'll act as a witness. He tells Teach and the Marines to leave immediately. Then we skip back to the present time. Shaki is then revealed to be the former captain of the Kuja pirates from two generations ago named Shakuyaku. I wonder if this has anything to do with the theory that Shaki used to be on Rox's crew. I mean Shaki could have still been on Rox's crew while having acted as the Kuja pirates captain at one point. Rayleigh declares that he couldn't defeat Teach. He's just not in shape. He wouldn't be able to compare. So that's an interesting bit right there in terms of power scaling. Finally it is then revealed to us that Kobe was kidnapped by Blackbeard. Who knows why though? Oda has a lot to reveal to us when it comes to the Rocky Port incident, Law's role in it, Kobe's role in it, everything that it entailed, and how it connects to Blackbeard. Last but not least, two bounties were revealed to us in this chapter, just like last chapter. Those being Boa Hancocks and Marshall D. Teach. Boa's bounty is revealed to us to be at 1.659 billion berries, so somewhere around first commander level. Pretty impressive, I must say. Teach's bounty, however, increased since about halfway in the Wano arc where it was somewhere in the two billions and now it is at 3.996 billion berries. He's catching up to Shanks. Anyways, very solid chapter. I was very satisfied. Again, this has been several weeks in a row now where Oda delivers big time and I have to admit, the final saga has not disappointed so far and is looking like it's gonna deliver some great content. Here's hoping that One Piece as a whole will deliver a satisfying conclusion. Something that a lot of other shonen kind of fail to do. Although I do have some faith in Oda, even though I was kind of disappointed in the Wano arc. The Wano arc being disappointing for me, I don't believe that that's enough to have overall doubts in Oda. I think he's going to be able to pull it off, especially with the fact that he's done some revisions, so hopefully he trimmed some of the unnecessary fat. Anyways, the common question of the day is, why is Blackbeard so interested in the hero Kobe from the Rocky Port incident? Leave your answer in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and have a good one.